billion dollar industry. A billion dollars every year from chickens, eggs, turkeys, ducks, geese, pigeons, squabs, and guineas. A billion dollar industry spread across a continent. Five million farms, thousands of hatcheries, produce plants, packing houses, cold storage plants. Small flocks of a few birds, farm flocks of a few hundred, large commercial flocks that run into the thousands. An industry based on millions of producers, breeding, hatching, feeding, processing, shipping, and selling. A scientific industry where science has brought forth new ways, new means, new types and breeds. Science that controls the breeding, feeding, housing, preparation, and marketing of food so valuable and so delicious that a billion dollars a year is paid by consumers that they may enjoy it. Certain poultrymen specialize in breeding and distribute this improved stock by selling hatching eggs, baby chicks, or mature birds. Scientific breeding is based on trap nesting and progeny testing. The National Poultry Improvement Plan, which is administered by the United States Department of Agriculture, has provided progressive stages in a breeding program. Trap nesting provides the means of keeping track of the egg production and development of individuals and families. Under this plan, Flocks are also blood tested for pylorum disease. Standard bred poultry is used as foundation stock to develop birds that by their good livability and high egg production will return a profit to the poultry producer. The old familiar broody hen, which sits on only the small number of eggs she can warm with her own breast, is rapidly giving way to the modern incubator that can hatch as many as 50,000 eggs at one time. The mechanical hen, with perfectly controlled conditions of temperature and humidity, has called for modern mass production methods of selecting, traying, and turning the eggs. Row on row of incubators that may hold as many as a million and a half eggs under a single roof. A hatchery business that has grown from the small incubator on the farm to these modern plants under scientific control and management. A business made possible by the fact that baby chicks may be shipped safely to distant points. In modern hatcheries, chicks are carefully sorted to pick out the good, sound chicks that stand the best chance of developing into profitable producers. An interesting development of recent years is the sexing of baby chicks. Trained, nimble fingers and searching eyes quickly determine the sex and sort the chickens into pullets and cockerels. Some operators can sex a thousand chicks an hour with an accuracy of 98%. Hatching is not confined to chicken eggs, ducks, turkeys, and even wildfowl have been successfully hatched by artificial incubation. The shipment of turkey eggs and poults has caused a shift in the geographical centers of turkey production. These are poults of the bronze variety. Here is a box of white hollows. And these belong to the black variety. Modern methods of brooding consist of supplying heat by any one of several methods and giving the chicks 
access to good growing rations. Strict sanitation must be maintained. These chicks are grown on a reinforced wire mesh floor. Others are rooted on a floor covered with litter of an absorbent nature. Chicks old enough to do without heat are sometimes raised on wire runways where all the feed they consume must be brought to them. Other chicks are grown out on a range which provides succulent green food which must be supplemented by mash and grain. Inexpensive shelters which can be moved when the ground in the immediate area becomes contaminated are provided for growing pullets. Segregation of growing pullets and cockerels is a highly recommended practice. The commercial poultryman finds it profitable to have pullets in each of his units all about the same age. So they come into production when egg prices are the highest. The farm flocks supply the bulk of the poultry products. Although the small flock of poultry is only one of several sources of income on the farm, farm flocks usually have unlimited range. The American public likes fried chicken. This demand, coupled with scientific development, has made possible a large commercial broiler production industry. This is concentrated in a few areas, and the birds are handled in large units, often 10,000 or more chicks being brooded in one longhouse. Both cockerels and pullets are sold for broilers. Large-scale commercial egg farms represent only a small part of the poultry population. But the quality of the product, due to superior handling methods, sets the pace for farm flock producers. Eggs are collected several times a day and removed at once to a room where the temperature is low and the humidity is high. Special precautions are taken to keep all the eggs clean. These open mesh wire baskets permit free circulation of air and facilitate prompt cooling. Apartment houses for poultry with the added problems of lighting and ventilation have taxed the ingenuity of the agricultural engineer. Some are new buildings designed for this purpose, while others are remodeled barns. Such buildings usually house about 200 chickens in each pen and have been built with as many as 50 pens. Further concentration is secured by placing birds in laying batteries. These individual cages are approximately 12 inches wide and 18 inches deep and are usually placed in four tiers. Feed and water are kept before the birds at all times the only exercise she gets is in laying an egg. Hens in complete confinement are fed special rations which are carefully balanced and supplemented with vitamins. They appear contented and sing even though standing on a wire floor. The use of mechanical graters for sorting eggs by size is increasing. Several different types are in use so adjusted as to give a uniform size in each dozen of eggs. Two commodity exchanges trade in futures and eggs, handling more than two million cases a year. Trading often reaches a feverish peak as eggs, not yet laid, are bought and sold. The old laws of supply and demand control the trend of the market with a supply subject to production curves, the vagaries of the weather, cold storage holdings, and the size of the year's hatch. Demand fluctuating with changing business conditions and consumer tastes. All of these are reflected in the future market. A few cooperative egg auctions have been established near consumer centers. And we want you to listen with us to the chant of the egg auctioneer. Three cakes, 62 pounds. We got 26. Will you make water? And a half, yeah. second half, and half, they go half a seven, seven, we'll make seven of the eight, seven, quarter, quarter, and a half, seven and a half, and a half, and a half, they go half, they go half, they go, 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 and I have five, we have your tonight, 24 out funds. Right. Three other beers, 62 pounds, sir, and we've only got one water. 
Since eggs are a perishable commodity, they must be moved rapidly into and out of the concentration points. Production centers are located at great distances from the consumption centers, and to maintain quality, orderly marketing requires a coordinated transportation system. Long trains of freight cars, especially refrigerated, motor trucks, large and small, all contribute to the speedy movement of the eggs from the nest to the consumer. Mother Nature has decreed that egg production should be highest during the spring months. Man wants eggs all year round, so he puts the surplus of the fat months into storage for the lean months. Scrupulously clean rums held at a low temperature maintain all the quality put into the egg by the hen. Modern research has removed much of the stigma formerly attached to cold storage eggs. The 30 dozen egg case is the standard package for wholesale egg operations. But the housewife prefers to purchase her eggs in cartons containing one dozen. Bakeries, mayonnaise manufacturers, and the chemical industry prefer their eggs in liquid, frozen, or dry form. So processing plants take eggs out of the shell. These girls break eggs all day. Notice the skill in separating the white from the yolk. Preliminary testing by flashing the egg before a light is not sufficient to detect a bad flavored egg. So smelling each container is a vital part of the technique. Liquid eggs are merchandised as whole eggs, egg yolks, or egg whites. The standard container is a 30 pound can, and the strict sanitation maintained in the plant ensures a low bacterial count for the product. Liquid eggs are stored at a temperature of zero Fahrenheit which minimizes further bacterial growth. Liquid egg white is preserved by drying in a pan at high temperature. Pan drying is an infant industry in the United States because of very stiff foreign competition. All egg white must go through a controlled fermentation process before it can be dried. Large quantities are used in the candy industry and by bakeries for meringues and cake icing. Dried egg white, called albumin, is also used for non-food purposes, such as adhesives, photo engraving, tanning leather, sizing textiles and paper, and refined grades are used in preparing medicine. Most of these plants are located near the source of supply, and operate when eggs are plentiful and prices are low. Modern science has speeded up the fermenting process so that spray drying of albumin has been made possible. No fermentation is needed for spray drying yolks. Processed liquid is forced through tiny nozzles under high pressure into a chamber of heated air, and the dried egg floats down like snow, ready to be collected and packed. Modern equipment carries the product to the packaging room, untouched by human hands, and the rigid sanitary standards are satisfied. Chemical checks throughout the processing help the quantity of the product. In this final mechanical whipping test, the measured quantity of the powder is placed in a mixing bowl with a measured quantity of water and whipped at high speed with stopwatch accuracy. To pass this rigid test, the albumin must whip up to 100 times its original volume. Poultry flows from farm to market through a large variety of channels. Some is sold direct to the consumer, some to local markets, some to poultry packers who may ship it live or fatten and dress it. Here again, speed is an important factor in maintaining the health and quality of the product. It is 
recommended that shippers protect the birds from the elements on long hauls. The local poultry merchant transfers the birds from the crates to batteries in order that he may show his wares. The size, condition, and finish are all factors in determining the price paid to the farmer. As with eggs, live poultry is produced at great distances from the consumer centers, and the same swift transportation is required to get the birds to market in good condition. Specially designed railroad cars are utilized for transporting the live birds to market. These cars are provided with built-in cages, with removable feed and water troughs, and the sides are open so the ventilation is good. In fact, the railroad men call these cars chicken pullmans, and an attendant travels with each car, feeding and watering at regular intervals. As proof that the birds are kept happy and then they frequently show a gain in weight at the end of the trip. The majority of these birds go into the kosher trade, which demands that poultry be killed according to the ancient Jewish ritual. On arrival at the terminal market, the birds are transferred from the cars to cooks for transportation to the slaughterhouse and the live poultry market. Most regulations in most cities require that the birds be inspected for health and for evidence of overstuffed crops. One market in New York City, the old Washington market, handles millions of birds a year. Early in the morning, before the rest of the city is astir, buyers for slaughterhouses and the neighborhood markets and stores descend on the market to carefully select birds that meet their special requirements. In the producing area, produce houses concentrate the poultry from a large number of farms. The birds are graded, some are slaughtered immediately, while others are placed in feeding batteries for fattening on a special ration composed of grain and milk. This is the source of the much advertised milk-fed poultry. In order to keep the birds comfortable and obtain profitable gains, the modern poultry packing station is often air-conditioned. Back to the farm for a moment and follow turkeys right through the dressing process. This turkey ranch houses over 3,000 breeders. Turkeys are brooded under hovers, the same as chickens. And to enforce the strict sanitation so necessary in raising turkeys, pens and sun porch with a wire mesh floor are provided for the young birds. Another system commonly practiced when brooding on the ground is to move the young birds to a fresh range each week. Modern nutrition methods have made it possible to raise the birds to maturity on wire, but the most common practice is to move them to a range as soon as they are old enough to do without the heat. With hundreds of birds in the flock, the ground soon becomes contaminated and they are moved to a clean range each week. It is very important not to use the ground over which chickens have been run. Many birds are dressed on the farm, but in concentrated production areas, well-equipped dressing plants have been established. Modern conveyor systems receive the birds and carry them through all the processes to the cooling room. A knife in the skilled hands of the workman in the background severs the jugular vein and pierces the brain, relaxing the muscles so the large feathers may be pulled. This is a decided improvement on grandfather's sharp hatchet. The conveyor carries the bird through a hot water bag, held at 128 degrees, which loosens the feathers but does not cook the skin. The scald and roughing remove only the coarser feathers, and the birds are carried over a tank of melted wax which comes up and coats them with a tightly fitting sheet, which grips each pen feather. 
As the hardened wax is stripped from the carcass, practically all the remaining feathers are removed. Although the wax process leaves the carcass in a very clean condition, final inspection catches the occasional feather that may have escaped the wax. With heads wrapped in waterproof paper for convenience in packing, the carcasses are removed from the conveyor to racks, which are wheeled into the cooling rooms for prompt chilling. It is important that the internal temperature be lowered as quickly as possible to preserve the quality. United States standards prescribe the various grades for the dressed carcasses. U.S. grading is optional, but is practiced by many plants. Birds are sorted by size and grade and packed in boxes or barrels. In recent years, the single layer box has become the most popular package. Each bird is handled carefully, and the packing table is padded so the carcass does not get bruised. This careful handling in every step of the process enables the American public to get its turkey in prime condition. Because of these modern methods, turkey is no longer just a holiday bird, but is eaten all year round. Needless to say, chickens are dressed by these same modern methods. Turkeys and chickens are also prepared in the dressing plants in such a manner that they are ready for the oven of a city housewife. The birds are drawn, inspected by a veterinarian, washed under high pressure to assure cleanliness, wrapped in cellophane, placed in an attractive package, and quickly frozen. These birds must be delivered to the consumer in a frozen condition in order to maintain their quality. For the nervous bride faced with the important task of roasting her first turkey, an attractive booklet of recipes is included in the package. To ensure the continued improvement of poultry products, the United States Department of Agriculture, through its educational program, encourages the diffusion of knowledge to both the producer and consumer. Farm boys and girls, such as these 4-H Poultry Club members, study improved practices and demonstrate them in public. Information is carried into the homes of the consumers by bulletins, newspaper articles, and radio. The timid husband is given instructions on carving his first family turkey with hints on locating the joints and keeping the bird alive. Research, all the producer's work, the dressing, the marketing, the consumer education leads directly to the great consuming public, to the American family, the center of our democracy gathered around the festive board, not only to satisfy the cravings of the inner man, but also to give reverent thanks for their abundance and to intensify the family spirit. Thus, poultry meat makes an important contribution to American ideals and unity. Not only on holidays, but every day. In fact, every morning, we start the day with a delicious and nourishing plate of bacon and eggs. 
Have you ever thought of eggs as nature's most perfectly packaged food, as sunshine and sealed packages? Within the shell of the egg are all the elements needed to support life. Proteins, minerals, vitamins, compounded by nature in such a delicate manner that the most clever chemist can only imitate. Eggs can be prepared in many appetizing forms. In fact, one famous chef has said that all cookery depends on the egg. This is no modern observation, but has come down through the ages by recipes passed from mother to daughter and from ancient manuscripts. Eggs, when combined with other ingredients, go to make up cakes, pastry, salads, soups, dressings, and many other forms of delicacies. Eggs are an all-year-round food and all-weather food, and they are relished from the tropics to as far north as man can go. The high-strung athlete depends on an easily digested food such as eggs for nourishment. The hurried Wall Street broker has only time to stop for his favorite fountain drink with a raw egg in it. Eggs supply not only nourishment, but also contribute to the decoration of food, a nutritious decoration, the icing on cake, meringue on pies. What more fitting for a crown on such a luscious piece of pastry than the fluffy mound of egg and sugar tinted a delicate brown by the genial rays of the oven? What outing or picnic would be complete without delicious fried chicken, cooked to tender crispness at home or broiled in the open over glowing coals? Doctors and nurses rely on poultry meat and eggs in making up the diets of invalids and infants. Eggs are the first solid food of that most important consumer of them all, 